What's going on everybody? It's your favorite dating coach, Elliot Scott from ElliotScottDating.com and today we're going to discuss how to get a boyfriend when you're slightly older, 30 and on 30 on up. Now of course this probably works for anyone, but we're talking mostly for 30, 40, 50 year olds here, okay? So to start this off, um, I want you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and like, comment, do whatever you gotta do, share to get this around. I'm trying to help as many people as possible. Okay, and we're going to break this up in two different ways. First, we're going to talk about the, the male mindset of a 20-year-old versus a 30-year-old and what they're looking for. And then I'm going to give you a little game plan to, uh, to attract that guy. What you need to do to not self-sabotage yourself, to um, get out there and do what you got to do. Okay, because we all deserve Mr. Right or Miss Right, whatever you're into. It don't matter. Uh, start off. Let's talk about the difference between the male mind at a 20 year old or a, you know, the guy in the 20s and the guy in the 30s. Uh, you wouldn't think there's much of a difference, but there is. I know you probably still know a bunch of perverted 30, 40 year olds, but it's, there's a difference, okay? And it has to do with, um, I guess, your evolutionary uh, makeup, okay? When both sexes are in their 20s, obviously you guys are more sexual, or what I like to call your sexual prime, or your sexual market value. Um, and I don't mean that purely as a physical sexual way, I just mean that from a phys physiological, biological um, aspect. And it's these things that subconsciously drive the male mind. For example, um, when a male's younger, he's obviously at his sexual prime because he gets better erections, he's not balding yet, he still has his libido, he's more muscular, more energetic, he looks younger, he looks healthier, and so on. And the same with women. I know you guys know that your body, as you age, uh, the chance of having kids is, you know, and, you know, you're just, you're just more youthful, your skin's better, and things like that. So... With that being said, a guy, when he's in his 20s, I, I know you heard it before, I'm going to say it again, all guys say something like, you know, I don't want a relationship right now, I, I'm in my prime, I'm too young to settle down, and that's actually true, that's what actually guys, I mean guys are telling you straight up how they're feeling, you know, and the reason's because they're, they're young, why, they think, why at my prime would I want to settle down, now I'm not saying guys don't, because the average guy um, probably will settle down if he finds the right girl. But for the most part, I know you've heard it before. I hear it all the time. I used to say it. And it was just, I'm too young. I don't want to settle down. Not yet. That's the thing. You know, it's, it's the time It's the time parallel. We, we think, oh, we have all this time. You know, I'm only 25, I'm only 26, uh, 27. Or I'm in my young 20s. I just started college. I don't want to settle down. Come on, you know. And again, guys will. Because I, I have a cousin who I never thought would settle down. He's a little bachelor. But now he's 23 and married. It happens, right? Right girl, right time. Which we'll get all in it all that. But here's the difference. A 20-something will say those things I just told you. You know, I don't want to settle down because of X, Y, Z. I'm at my prime, sexual prime. Women are at their best. Yada, 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 right? Men in their 30s and up are a little different. They are still very young, but they know that we start, you can ask any male, we start thinking, well, while we're still great and we're still healthy and young and stuff like that, we're not what we were in our 20s. And a male can tell that, okay? You can, he can tell the difference between his sex drive. Now, why men in their 30s are still in 40s and, you know, are still sexual? Nowhere near as much as you were when you were in high school or if you were in, um, or you're, you know, college and early 20s big difference okay and a male starts to think you know I just don't have it like I used to so I, I need to start slowly settling down now here's the thing you're thinking well okay if that's the case then why the you know the 30 guys or you know single men who are 30 who say they don't want to settle down well the reason for that I would say is when you're in your 30s and up you kind of have an advantage over guys who are not in their 30s, the younger men, and that stability, security, um, I, I want to say success. When you're in your young 20s, you know, people say, you know, I'm going to live in my 20s, I'll work 30, you know, 30 on down, whatever, I'm young, 20, I got to live it up. Well, that's the reason why. When you're in your 20s, you're living it up, you're doing your thing. 
But when you're in your 30s, you have a little more of an advantage, stability. You, you actually have a career. You've been through it all. You've been through your breakups, your ups and downs. A guy in his 30s knows what he wants from a woman, okay? Unlike a guy in his 20s, he's still looking, he's still searching. Uh, he might have a, he might have more ambitions, more goals. He ha he has more time invested in things. Uh, he he might have a career, you know, things like that. A home, a house, bills to pay. He has to, you know, he starts to settle down. But at the same time, he has these assets that these younger men do not have. And he and if he doesn't find the right girl, he's going to use these assets to do it. Okay, so that might be one of the reasons why a guy in his 30s won't settle down. He is not finding the right woman and he's using these assets because now he actually has them. It's like a whole new, um, you know, they might say the 30s is the new 20. And it's because he has this new burst of uh, ideas and energy because of all these things he has. He has these new um, variables that will actually have him compete with the younger man. So what do you do to counter this? Um... There's a thing I believe, I'm a big believer in this, I read about it, I've been studying it for a long time, and as I said before, it's about the sexual market value and what I call the marriage market value. When both males and females are younger, on average, they're not as marriageable as they are in their 30s, okay? Again, they're both sexual, they don't want to settle down as, as easy, okay? I'm not saying you don't, but as easy. Um, you might, you know, the average girl might not, you know, I mean, they, like, I'll speak for men. Men are more impulsive, okay? When we're younger, we're more impulsive. We don't know what we're not, we want. We're irrational. Um, we're all over the place. We're not as stable. And for again, for a woman, like you, you might be more marriageable in your thirties because you've been there, done that. You've been through it all. Like in your when you're twenty-five, you might not know what you want, but when you're thirty-five, you know exactly what you want. You know exactly what you want. You want to know uh, how to get it. Um, you've been through your ups and downs. Your heart breaks. You know you've been through enough guys. You know exactly what you want and what you don't want from a relationship and from that guy. And and you know you might be also in your career. You also might be. Um, paying these bills and doing all these things. So it's time to settle down. You have more of a, a marital uh, value because when you're young, you have a high sexual value, okay? Both men and women. They're both such a sexual. That's just how we are. But when you start, but when you start to age, you're right. The, you're, uh, you know, unfortunately, you, uh, you, you're not looking as good as you were at your prime as you're in your 20s now again don't get me wrong i know a bunch of 50 year olds who are better looking than when they were in their 20s or a bunch of 20 year olds i know beautiful 50 year olds okay i'm just saying hypothetically on average for the sake of this argument when you're aging you know obviously you're getting older you're not getting any younger but at the same time your marriage value is going up because you know more about life experience and what you want. You're starting to settle down. So is the guy. And the same has to do with the guy. When he starts to age, he's not as uh, sexual, or you know he is, but you know he, his libido won't be as high, his erections won't be as strong, stuff like that. He starts to become more, now I'm not saying that's what makes him marriageable, but you know he starts to settle down. So when you age, think of it like this. When you age, your marriage value goes up, when you're uh, and your sexual value goes down and vice versa. When you're young, under 20 or under uh, 30, your sexual value is high and your marital value is low because you don't, you know, a lot of people don't want to settle down. So, how do you get a guy with that? If you're able to show your youthfulness, now I'm not saying just the way you look, I'm saying how you act, your energy, your, your, the way you dress, the way you carry yourself. If you're just youthful for your age group, I'm not, I'm not saying you have to compete with a 20 year old, okay? If you're youthful for your age group, if you're able to stick out from your age group, studies have shown this. It's your age group. It's not any guy young. It's not the younger women. Then you have an, a, a huge advantage over attracting a guy. You know, and a lot of women might not see this because, again, you you might be. You know, women are very strong, very independent nowadays. They they might be invested in their jobs and they have kids and stuff like that. And it's just emotionally and mentally and physically draining. Okay, so I totally understand. But if you're able to keep this youthful image, right? So here's the thing. Your, your marriage value is going up. But if you're able to keep your youthful image, it also goes up with it. The thing is, a lot of people go like this or they go like that. If you, but if you're like this, then you're going to you're gonna attract a guy. So you need to stay youthful by exercising, working out, um, looking young, 
feeling young, acting young. The biggest thing was acting young on I read. It was it was acting young, having a lot of energy, being youthful, not talking or caring about your age and stuff like that. Now, of course, in your 30s, you might not think that, but that's the case. So you have to get a guy when you're on the, or both are on the e-client. I actually wrote an article on that. If you want to go check out my site, elliotscottdating.com, you can uh, look at that. Um, I go into real depth. Um, so that's how you attract the guy when you're over 30. Uh, you have to have a high marriage value and you have to have a high sexual or uh, youthful value. So what's the game plan to do uh, to do all this? Like what do I have to do to attract the guy, find the guy, stuff like that? Well, here's the thing. I, from when I was working with a lot of women, they, uh, they always seem like they get in their own way. If, for women who are over 30, it seems like the thing is, you know, the dating pool's thinning. Um, my, you know, people are criticizing me, judging me for still being single and, you know, over 30, which that has nothing to do with the dating pool, but that's just one of the problems they have. And another one was they always got in their own way. They feel like, you know, I'd rather be single than settle. And I totally understand. I agree. Never settle. Never, ever, ever settle. I'd rather be single than settle personally. I am single. But, uh, the thing is, you know, they seem to have these, the thing is they, they, they're too picky. They have these long lists of things that they want, and that's not the way to do it. That is not the way to do it. You have to, um, kind of pick the important things and the, and the do nots, the deal breakers and stuff like that, and then kind of find a guy within there. So I'm going to give you a plan. Okay. I call it the two, four, six, eight rule. If you follow this, you should find a guy. Okay. And hear it all out. Okay. First one is number two, um, have two deal breakers. Have two things in a guy that you do not, no, no negotiation, done. You're out, right, kick out. For example, mine would be uh, if I wanted to get a woman, I would say I hate negativity and I hate excuses or drama, whatever. One, one of those two or three things, okay? I cannot stand it. If, you, if, you're, if you're, you know, most of the time dramatic, negative, talking about others, bitching, complaining, you're out. That's a deal breaker. I do not want that in my life, okay? So that's number one. You gotta have two, that, that eliminates a lot of people. The things, that, the people who are just like, nope, gone. Save you a lot of time. It's all about the 80-20 rule, right? The second thing, or, you know, is, is, number, is the number four, and that's four quality traits you want in the guy. Okay, now listen here. Think about this very, very closely, very, very carefully, because these four things, right? They uh, they're gonna kind of make up and mold the guys. So, for example, if I say I want a girl who's positive, ambitious, confident, um, and you know, and physically attractive, well, the first three things, if you think about it, confident, attract, or confident, ambitious, stuff like that, that shows that the girls healthy pretty much emotionally or if she's confident she's ambitious or not confident but if she's ambitious then she's driven she's goal oriented like you gotta think of it like that okay and uh it's really important to think of it like let's say um let's say i asked you to describe a pizza okay you would tell me a pizza is uh it's round flat for the most part it has Cheese, sauce, you, you know, it tastes like this, tastes like that. Now, I would argue, okay, great, but is that really what a pizza is? Or is that the characteristics of a pizza? Do you get what I'm saying? No matter how you make a pizza, no matter what you're putting on it, how you're making the crust, you still know a pizza when you see it despite the characteristics. And that's what I'm trying to get you to, to think about. You know, you, you still are going to get a, a certain type of guy that you want to as long as you have the right characteristics, as long as he's a, like a good guy, loyal, um, you know, hardworking, uh, very goal oriented, ambitious, you're, you know, those traits are going to be matched most of the time with good guys. So keep that in mind. So if you think four is not enough, I need more than that. I'm picky. Think, remember four things usually will make up a majority of men. Okay, the next thing was uh, six. Now, this is, I want you to spend six hours a week doing uh, looking for a guy. Now, when I say that, listen, I know you're all probably clicking off now. Listen, when, you, when I say that, I actually mean just doing something differently. If it's taking a different, if you walk at night, okay, walk in the morning, a different, walk a different route and count that as time. Uh, if you go to a grocery store in the morning, go at night. If you don't go to the gym, 
go to the gym. Hell, that'll do it right there. If you go to the gym six times a week, an hour a day, there you go. Oh, you need to do. You need to do something. Uh, here's a better way to put it. You need to do something different. You know, six hours a week. Okay. So if you if you walk, if so if you drive to, uh, or let's say you take the elevator to, you know, up to your room or whatever take the stairs do something different for six hours the reason you're not getting a guy most of the time is you're we're all stuck in these routines we're doing different you know and people are just such routine magnets and routine whores that we we te we seem to um you know just follow that and so, so again so is the other guy the sun's getting here now you see that and so is the other guy so you're not obviously going to run into him unless you switch your routine and jump into his so let's say you don't get coffee in the morning well guess what start going to starbucks and get coffee in the morning you might see a nice guy there here and there stuff like that and the last thing is eight talk to eight men a week now i don't mean sleeping with these guys or dating these guys i just mean randomly walking up Somehow, if you're in line, I don't care if you're in line at um, a coffee shop. I don't care if you are in a um, do-it-yourself store or DIY store. I don't care if you're, I don't care, gym, whatever it is. Find a way to talk to eight different men a week. Now, that could be uh, asking them the time. That can be asking him directions. That could be asking him how to, you know, situ what I call situational openers, which is if you're at a do-it-yourself store or DIY store, ask him how to make this, how to, you know, make that, or where to find this or that. Or if you're at a grocery store, ask him what do, you know, what kind of, you know, about meat or whatever, how to, how to cook, you know, something like that. Situational openers are the best way to attract a guy or to open up a guy without being nervous or uh, self, you know, conscious, or any of that kind of stuff. So if you do those things, okay, if you do the two, four, six, eight rule, and you and you focus on the sexual value and the marital value of both sexes, and kind of where you know everyone stands, you're gonna have a much easier time finding a guy, okay, no matter your age. So with that being said, I love you guys. Remember that two, four, six, eight rule. I know it doesn't sound like it'd be important, cause I can see it's like, okay, I already know what I want. Uh, but seriously, the six and the eight make all the difference. If you can spend six hours, you know, doing something different a week, if that's, again, you might say, I don't have the time, but I mean, just do something different. You know, if you go to the gym in the morning, go to the gym at night. If you, you know, walk this path, walk that path, just do something different. Okay. And that makes all the difference because everyone's in a routine and they're set in stone and you're never going to cross paths unless you switch something up. Okay. Cause the guy ain't going to switch up cause he's not even thinking about it. And again, the eight, if you can talk to just eight men a week, eight men a week. Okay. Whatever it is, you're going to succeed. So with that being said, I love you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you haven't, uh, got my book below 254 pages on how to attract any guy, please check that out is completely free. Love you. Take care.